So let me just, uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce our next speaker, Professor Andreas Costa. He's uh, one of our senior uh, leaders um, of the cardiac anesthesia department. And he's also the leader of the pediatric cardiac anesthesia. And uh, he's uh, now since uh, one month also the program director of the PCA fellowship program here in um, Bad Oeynhausen. And his research is mostly, um, every, I think everyone knows him, uh, mostly uh, focused on coagulation management in high-risk patients, especially in elder patients. So please, Andreas. So thank you very much for the kind invitation. My topic is intercoagulation management of patients with hit for Elvet implantation. Doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So hit is a big topic in cardiac surgery since more than 25 years, and the concepts have changed. When I started, there was a classical concept. So the hit immune complexes bind to the immune receptor of the platelets, platelets are activated, platelet count decreases, the activated platelets release thrombin and the thrombin burst causes thrombosis. However, the newer concept is a multicellular concept. The hit immune complex not only bind to platelets, they also bind to monocytes, which release tissue factor and stimulate the extrinsic ex uh, coagulation pathway. They bind to neutrophils, which release the traps or the nets and cause an intrinsic activation of the coagulation system. And besides these actions caused by the immune receptors, there are actions on the endothelium and coagulation pathways are activated. We have new guidelines since 20, 2018 from the American Society of Hematology, and they are quite different from the former guidelines of the ACCP or the European guidelines of EACTA and EACTS. And of particular importance are these two phases here, acute hit and supercute hit. They're characterized by the fact that the platelet aggregation assays, the functional assays are positive. And only for these patients, an alternative anticoagulation approach is uh, mandatory. This is a big difference to the ACCP guidelines and the EAPS guidelines. In the remaining patients, the author think that you can safely give heparin. Another difference is the status of bilberudin. In the old guidelines, it was first goal to avoid heparin and to perform an alternative interpolation with bilberudin or other agents. In the new guidelines, bilberudin is subsumed under the more palliative strategies where we give heparin and have additional action like plasmaphoresis or combine heparin with an antiplatelet agent. So big difference in these new guidelines. When we look at the incidence and severity of it in bad patients, these are old data, but they fit even to date. Approximately 10% of patients develop HIT. Elder patients, 5% have the diagnosis of HIT before the implantation. So in 5%, you need an alternative strategy. 5% will develop HIT after the implantation. All patients who are positive tested for it have a high risk to experience thromboembolism, particularly if it is diagnosed after surgery. The so mortality, particularly of the patients who develop it after surgery is fairly high. So I believe that it's of most importance to avoid heparin if ever possible. And the agent of choice is bivirudin. Bivirudin is a bivalent reversible direct thrombin inhibitor with a short half-life of 25 minutes. And the unique feature is the cleavage by thrombin itself. 80% of bivirudin are cleaved by thrombin. Only 20% are eliminated with the renal pathway. There's no antidote. However, this unique pharmacology has implications for the surgical practice or perfusion practice. In every area where you have stagnant blood and balloon concentrations are not maintained by the constant infusions, they will critically decrease and this will lead to thrombosis. 